Seljay Kovalev, really good fighter. He recently just came out and he said that he's willing to face Saul Canelo Alvarez November 2nd. Right? Now, prior, prior to Anthony Yard versus Saul Canelo Alvarez, every, every little article that I was reading was reporting that the winner of that fight. Uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez wanted the winner of that fight. If it was Anthony Yard, he'll fight him. If it was Sergey Kovalev, he'll fight him. Okay, that was like all the reports that kept appearing. Now, obviously, Sergey Kovalev ended up winning against Anthony Yard. He beat him in a really good fight, very competitive fight. I got a lot of respect for Yard after watching that fight. All right, I thought he looked fantastic. I thought he showed a lot of heart. I thought he even won some rounds against Kovalev. But he came up short. Experience, you know. But now, because they're talking that Saul Canelo Alvarez is going to fight again at the end of the year. And Kovalev is interested. Okay? Now, that would be a a huge, huge, uh, big deal for both of them. First of all, it would be a big deal for Kovalev because that would be a big, massive payday for him. And that would also be a big deal for Sal Canelo Alvarez because I don't know if he's moving up in weight to fight for Kovalev's WBO light heavyweight strap. If you could correct me in the comments section below, I would really appreciate it. But uh, I would imagine he's he'll be he'll be moving up to 175 unless they do some type of stupid catch weight and though and he makes Kovalev come down to like 170, which I hope that he doesn't. I hope now I don't like catch weights in boxing. I really don't. I don't like it when I hear catch weights. If this fight actually happens, I hope that Kovalev, I mean, I hope that Saul Canelo Alvarez fights him in his actual weight class, 175, and challenges and, ta- and challenges Sergey Kovalev for the 175-pound WBO light heavyweight strap. I hope, because that would be the right thing to do. I hope that it's not some type of um, catch weight, but that would be a big deal for Saul Canelo Alvarez, because that's a big deal. Like, say he actually moves up to 175 and faces Kovalev. Although Kovalev might not be in his prime, he's still a threat. He's still a really good fighter, and that's a big deal. You know, Saul Canelo Alvarez is a guy who turned pro at 147 at welterweight. All right. In my opinion, his natural weight class is really middleweight, 160. So it's pretty impressive for a guy like Saul Canelo Alvarez to be moving up in weight. Like I said, I hope if he does actually face him, he actually faces him at 175. But again, knowing how, you know, these, knowing how Oscar de la Hoya is, he'll probably make it into like a catchweight type of fight. Anyway, I'm, I would be picking Saul Canelo Alvarez. And why? Because Sergey Kovalev can't deal with body shots. And Saul Canelo Alvarez is known for throwing some really crazy and really wicked and really on point body shots. Okay. Anthony Yard, in my opinion, could have beaten Sergey Kovalev if he would have stayed with the body shots. All right. If you look at my live uh, commentary, when I was live uh, streaming that, uh, I was doing a live commentary for Sergey Kovalev versus Anthony Yard. And if you hear it, <laughs> I was saying throughout, literally from the first round, second round, third round, fourth, I kept saying, I'm very surprised that Anthony Yard is not going to the body. That surprised me. I was like, did he not see Andre Ward? Did he not see uh, Alito Alvarez the first time around? Sergey Kovalev has a problem with body punches. People who rough him up, go on the inside and throw body punches, always trouble Sergey Kovalev. Anthony Yard, prior to facing Sergey Kovalev, was known for throwing good body shots. I thought he... Threw a lot of, even though he's fighting shit opposition, he he, I I thought he threw really good body shots. But when he fought Sergey Kovalev, he was mostly head hunting. Like he kept throwing like a left hook, a, a a left hook. He kept trying to land this left hook on Sergey Kovalev. Um, and he kept doing that. It was he was basically head hunting the whole t- fight. And I kept saying throughout the whole live stream, like, man, why is Anthony Yard not going to the body more? And funny enough. Once he actually started going to the body, that's when he started having success. 
In round eight, that was the, the round where he really started going to the body. He went to the head of Sergey, but then he went to the body. And the minute he started doing that, that's when you started seeing Sergey Kovalev wilt. But then he neglected the body shots again. I feel that had he probably done, had he probably from round one, had he started and invested early on to the body, he probably would have done what he did to Sergey Kovalev in round eight, probably earlier, maybe round five, round four. And had he kept being consistent with the body shots, he probably would have gotten Sergey Kovalev out of there. You know? But maybe it's just inexperience. Anthony Yard didn't be consistent with that. He instead elected to go with the headshots. Now, Saul, Can Sa Saul Canelo Alvarez is known for body shots. All right? Devastating body shots. All right? And... I see Saul Canelo Alvarez throwing body shots against Sergio Kovalev and hurting him and stopping him with, with body, accumulation of body shots. Yes, I see that. And especially, especially if this is a catch weight. If I find out that Sergio Kovalev is being drained to 170 to defend his WBO belt, which is makes no sense. But if I find that out, then that's gonna be that's gonna make me even more confident than that Saul Canelo Alvarez will knock him out with body shots because at his natural weight of 175 he can't take body shots. So imagine if he's drained at like a catch weight of 170, it's gonna be he's gonna be even more weaker, right? That's gonna weaken him even more. So uh, I think that's what's gonna happen. I think the body shots is going to destroy Sergey Kovalev. Either way, I think. This is a, I, I just think it's a really ballsy move for Saul Canelo Alvarez to move up to 175. Hopefully, he actually moves up to 175. Um, and, you know, but again, if Sergey Kovalev manages to beat <laughs> Saul Canelo Alvarez, that's, anybody who, who manages to beat Saul Canelo Alvarez, that's a massive big deal for them. Because Saul Canelo Alvarez is such a big a cash cow, so no matter who beats him, they're going to be getting massive props and massive praise. But I'm definitely picking. Oh no! Now I, I'm definitely picking South Korean Alvarez. But now I came across this article and it's telling me that uh, Sergey Kovalev wouldn't mind fighting in a catchway. Oh man! So that means he's willing to drain himself. He's willing to drain himself to face Deont uh, South Korean Alvarez, uh, which <laughs> which means he, he would get knocked out because. He, he can't take body shots and at his natural weight class, so he would get knocked out because he wouldn't be able to sustain the body work if he's willing to drain himself to face Sal Canelo Alvarez. Anyway, guys, that's all I have to say, guys. I'm picking Sal Canelo Alvarez to knock out Sergey Kovalev because he's even willing to drain himself. I'm out.